that uh, privileged statement concluded, Ms Geraghty, I'd now I invite you to make your opening statement to us. Thank, Thank you very much, Chair, and members of the committee for the opportunity to contribute today to the committee's work on tax expenditures. Uh, my name is Elaine Geraghty. I'm the CEO of Screen Producers Ireland, and here with me today are two of our members and our colleagues, producers, Siobhan Ward of Crossing the Line Films, um, produced such content as The Game, The Farthest, and A Wild Irish Year, and Stephen Rook of Tile Films, produced Aerial Ireland, Sacred Sites, and A Terrible Beauty. Before I speak about Section 481 and its importance to our Irish screen industry, I want to provide a brief overview about Screen Producers Ireland and our members' work. Um, screen Producers Ireland is the national represent uh, representative organisation of over 100 independent film, television and animation production companies. The Irish independent production sector comprises a diverse range of companies different sizes and spread across the country, producing content for television, cinema release and online distribution. These companies, majority of whom are in the SME bracket, produce high quality content, both in English and in Irish, which is culturally relevant and loved by Irish and global, global audiences. Irish independent productions have been lauded worldwide, including this year when spy member Element Pictures produced the favourite, a multi uh, nominated Oscar winning film. Other film and TV drama productions made by our members include Fastnet Films produced Black 47, Samson Films Float, Above, uh, Float Like a Butterfly, Ripple World uh, Pictures Never Grow Old, Abu Media, Finky and Metropolitan Films produced TV drama Vikings. Television productions made by our members include Indie Picks, Ear to the Ground, Coco Content, First Dates Ireland, Crossing the Line Films, producers of The Game, and Sea Fever, who produced Deep Atlantic, Ireland's Deep Atlantic, and Tile, who I've said produced Sacred Sites. Just in terms of what we do on the role of a producer, in the Irish film and TV sector, it is a vibrant industry, and it has a sophisticated infrastructure of production companies, studios, service companies, and expertise, all of which provide valuable employment in the Irish economy. Irish producers within that infrastructure are entrepreneurs who contribute significantly to the enterprise economy and in a way bridge the divide between commerce and culture. Producers are responsible for creative, financial, statutory management of the individual projects in which they're involved and they're engaged in all elements of production from the earliest stage of commissioning of concept, rights acquisition, development, sourcing of finance, pre-production, production, post-production post to delivery, marketing, distribution and compliance. Financing production is challenging and funding opportunities can be limited. Available funding for producing content includes a mixture, TV licence fee, uh, Broadcasting Authority of Ireland Sound and Vision funding, Creative Europe media funding, the Irish Language Broadcasting Fund, Section 481 tax relief and indeed private financing. And in this funding mix, the importance of Section 481 cannot be underestimated. Ireland has a long history of supporting the Irish TV and film industry through fiscal incentives, the most important of which was originally introduced in 1987, that's 481. And while having experienced a number of iterations over the years, Section 481 remains a crucial component. It's a crucial component to the sustainability and growth of the Irish independent production sector and is absolutely necessary if Ireland's film and TV industry is to continue to develop and thrive because those countries with which Ireland competes have similar or comparable incentives. A point also made by the Irish Tax Institute when they appeared in front of this committee a couple of weeks ago. The government commissioned Alsberg Spy Nordicity uh, Company to conduct an economic analysis of the Irish audiovisual industry. Um, and it defined the importance of Section 481 as underpinning the Irish film and TV industry. It provides vital finance to enable Irish producers to make local projects with local content in Ireland, ensures Irish producers remain attractive to international co-production partners, and places Ireland as a globally competitive location for co-productions and high-budget inward investment productions. The analysis recommended the extension of Section 481 to 2024 and as one of many recommendations to support the growth and sustainability of the Irish screen industry. 
The last available full year total committed figures for 2017 show a spend of 292 million in the Irish economy as a direct result of 481 certified projects. This was spent on goods, services and labour across TV drama, documentary, film and animation. There were 85 certified projects in that year, comprising 11 from animation, 17 from TV drama, 17 from film and 32 from documentary. Over the last four years, there have been some significant big budget TV drama projects. I'm sure you're familiar with them. They include Ripper Street, Night Flyers, which was made in Troy, Vikings and Into the Badlands. However, it's also interesting to note that the majority of productions in Ireland are in the one million and under budget range. And for example, over the years 2016, 17 and 18, the percentage of productions whose Section 481 eligible expenditure budgets were one million or less was 79, 85 and 83 percent respectively. It reflects the fact that the majority of Irish production companies are in that SME bracket. In the run-up to Budget 2019, we engaged with the Department of Finance and Revenue on the possibility of extending Section 481 beyond 2020. Now, this engagement has led to better understanding between all stakeholders on the operation of the incentive and to ongoing engagement, which in fact has been very, very helpful. In October last year, the Minister for Finance, Pascal Donoghue, announced the extension of Section 481 to run until December 2024, advising that the, extent, the extension of the incentive was to support the continued growth of the film industry in Ireland. The Minister also announced a new time-limited regional uplift of up to an additional 5%, and this will taper out over a four-year period. The uplift will support the development of new local pools of talent in areas outside the current main production hubs, which tend to be Dublin and Wicklow. And this will help to increase the geographic spread of the screen sector in Ireland and support the overall cultural objective of having an established and sustainable screen industry in Ireland. Significantly, the tax incentive moved to a self-assessment model, which became, uh, came into effect in March of this year. Uh, we believe that this move will make the application process more efficient in the long term. And in the meantime, we look forward to the publication of a new set of guidelines by revenue related to eligible expenditure. The announcement of the extension was welcome and very important as the lead in time for film, TV and animation projects from initiation, development to financing and production can span several years. Certainty around the long term availability of Section 481 is crucial to provide confidence and security to both the indigenous industry and to ensure we can continue to attract direct inward investment by international studios and producers. Speaking about Section 481, in May last, the Minister for Culture, Heritage and the Gaeltacht, Josepha Madigan, has said that Section 481 is a key and central component of the Irish screen sector. We support this statement by the Minister for Culture, which shows the Government's commitment to supporting a strong, vibrant Irish Indigenous film industry. Delivering quality employment is an obligation of Section 481. The Irish producer company itself employs a core full-time staff who work in the areas of production, development, administration, sales and marketing. That core staff are involved at all stages of delivering a production in a process that often takes, as I've said earlier, possibly three to four years. Crew are then hired when a project moves to the production stage and for the duration of that project. And crew comprise a mix of PAYE and self-employed individuals. The independent production sector uh, industry rather, provides significant employment opportunities for crew. The Department of Culture commissioned Alsberg report into the economic activity in the audiovisual sector for 2016, where it stated that there are over 7,070 full-time equivalents of employment in the live action film, TV and animation sectors. And these sectors of the industry contribute 692 million in GVA and generate 184 million in export earnings. Our crew are some of the best in the industry and act as a strong attractor for projects. This is in part because skills development has always been core to the production industry in Ireland, but also because Ireland has been able to attract a diverse range of projects enabled by Section 481. The introduction of the new skills development requirements as part of Section 481 application criteria means that we can continue to build upon this while allowing us to capture data and information with regards to skills development, we can track career pathways in the industry, as well as identifying and addressing skills gaps. In conclusion, 
Section 481 has a positive impact on the creation of indigenously produced content. It attracts incoming production and has a positive impact on the creation of quality employment. It contributes to Ireland's reputation as a global hub for high-tech digital and creative content and it has a direct impact on attracting tourism to our country. The result is that Ireland has become a very attractive location for incoming film and TV production, but is able to support ind Indigenous production at the same time. And expenditure in the Irish economy as a result of Section 481 clearly illustrates the need for Ireland to maintain and continue to improve its fiscal incentive as required. Be very happy to take any of your questions, as would my colleagues Siobhan and Stephen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elaine, for that very comprehensive.